Hey, hey! In the last video, I talked about different ways exposure and tension can cause soreness and breakage in your crown section, and solutions. If you haven't seen that video already, here's a link to it. In this video, I'll go over some interesting ways gravity plays a hand in crown section damage. Gravity is invisible, but it's all around us and plays a huge role in how things operate in and out of our body. Sebum, which is a miracle oil produced in the sebaceous glands attached to every hair follicle, slides out the sides of every hair strand. Some of the oil makes its way down your hair strands, but due to the curls and kinks of your hair, without manual assistance, most of it sits on your scalp. Sebum lubricates, coats, protects, and balances the pH of your hair and scalp. But because of gravity, and based on the shape of your head, most of the sebum produced in your crown section ends up sliding down to your nape area and the area behind your ears, leaving this section less lubricated, less coated, and less protected. This is another great reason why you should set up your grid in a way that gives you easier access to your crown section, because you're gonna have to massage, hydrate, and seal this section more often than the rest. Another possible culprit for a sore thinning crown could be poor blood circulation. Do your extremities like the tips of your fingers and your toes get cold fast or get numb from time to time? If you answered yes, you may have poor blood circulation. The top middle section of your scalp is the highest point of your body. So due to plain old gravity, it takes a little more effort for a sufficient amount of blood to reach and circulate throughout that area. Remember, it's not just about fast blood flow. It's really about a consistent exchange of old blood with new blood. So your hair follicles, which are alive, have around the clock access to nutrients and oxygen. But the solution is simple, get up and move. Let me explain this with facts. When you move, as in cardiovascular exercise, the harder your heart pumps blood. Over time with consistent cardio exercise, at least 30 minutes, five days a week, your heart actually changes by increasing the size of its left ventricle. With a larger left ventricle, even at rest, your heart will now be able to hold more and deliver a bigger burst of blood and oxygen with just one beat. Assuming you eat well and you don't have digestive issues, more blood flow per beat means more oxygen and nutrients for your whole body, including your entire scalp. Inverting your head, especially after a workout, is also really beneficial for boosting blood flow to your scalp. If you're already active and you have a sore and breaking crown, Check your hemoglobin levels with a doctor to see if you may be anemic. Below is a video with more details on anemia. For those of you watching with more advanced hair loss issues, I've also left a link below to a really good onion juice recipe. With consistent long-term use, hopefully it can help wake up your sleeping hair follicles. But if you've already developed scarring on your scalp, in other words, your hair follicles have been replaced with fibrosis, you should seek help from a dermatologist to run tests and let you know what your options are. I want to stress a dermatologist and not one of these hair restoration clinics ran by unlicensed people. But if you're in the early stages, it's best to deal with it and nip it in the butt before it progresses. Here's a quick recap. Keep in mind that there's other potential culprits out there, like relaxers, color treatments, flat irons, and overall poor health. Hey guys, I know a lot of you have been patiently waiting on the heat regimen video. It's coming. In the summer months to avoid shrinkage from all the humidity, I like to wear my hair in protective styles like braids and twists. I'm trying out faux locks this time around and I love them. I left information on how I got them done in the description section below. I used a company called Curl Refinery and they make the whole process really easy because they sell these kits 
that has all the hair and material you need based on what type of faux locks you're looking for. And they have a list of stylists you can pick from based on what location you're in. So my heat regimen usually starts around the end of October, early November. So I'll be uploading a detailed video on how I use heat in my hair around the fall season. So until then, please don't be mad at me. I hope this video was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.